My name is Rick Bonar. Uh, I'm going to introduce the workshop and uh, myself. I'm the current president of FRI Research until another three weeks at the end of the year. And uh, that's about the time when FRI Research uh, shifts into its 25 year anniversary. And I've been involved uh, since day one, actually helped to uh, write the original proposal. So it's time to retire and let somebody else take the reins. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this uh, bird workshop. Um, I'm going to give you a few words about FRI research and why we run these kinds of workshops. So uh, as ex explanatory material uh, before we get into the content of the speakers who will give you much more information than I will about birds. So FRI research, uh, many of you will be familiar with us, but there might be a few folks here who aren't, so I'll bore, uh, bore the ones of you who are familiar with uh, in hopes of uh, enlightening the ones that aren't. FRI Research is a non-profit, non-advocacy, independent applied research organization uh, consisting of partners. We've been, we been formed in 1992 and uh, coming up on 25 years anniversary as I mentioned next year. Um, we started off as the Foothills Model Forest under the federal government green plan funding if any of you remember far enough back and uh, evolved through the Foothills Research Institute and uh, a year or so changed our name to FRI Research to re reflect more our uh, geographic scope and uh, the interests of our partners. We're not just Foothills anymore, we're in the Foothills, but uh, we certainly do research across Alberta and beyond. I wanted to stress that it's applied research. Uh, it's generally um, not uh, question type research uh, from curiosity perspective. It's uh, problems that uh, partners have. They ask questions, we connect them with uh, researchers who convert those to science inter inter uh, interests and uh, investigations. And then uh, we try and maintain a tight relationship between the practitioners and the researchers to make sure that the re research remains relevant. As I mentioned, we started in the foothills in around Hinton, but we have since uh, expanded far beyond that. This is a, a slightly outdated uh, map that shows the scope, and the, it's a heat map, so uh, our various programs and projects uh, expand to the color, but also you can see where most of the work gets done. Our structure, um, we are an independent nonprofit company registered under Alberta. Uh, rules. Uh, we have a board of directors. Uh, we have programs, associations, and services as our main functional uh, aspects. And the programs are run by program leads, uh, which is generally a, a scientist uh, who has uh, charge to bring together the practitioners and the researchers and get things done. We generate annual work plans and multi-year business plans, and these are used to guide uh, the direction and activities of the FRI research. Uh, because we're a company, we have to have shareholders. Uh, none of the shares are worth anything, but uh, these are the 10 organizations that are the current shareholders of FRI research. And uh, they have agreed to provide uh, multi-year funding, and this is used to uh, provide the core of our activity, but in addition to that, we have uh, a lot of other partners and our annual budgets, uh, somewhere around five or six million dollars that comes through our accounts. But when you look at leveraged uh, work that comes through universities, through organizations such as NSERC and stuff like that, it's two or three times that amount. As I mentioned, we're a partner-based organization. We have over 140 different partners. Uh, this is just a few of them listed here. Um, very diverse and very uh, interested and engaged group of partners and it's interesting to see that typically what happens is when an organization comes along and partners with FRI research they remain as a partner we've had very little turnover uh, we get new partners coming on but very few of them go away once they join us as I mentioned uh, research programs these are the five that we currently have um, grizzly bear, caribou, mountain pine beetle ecology, healthy landscapes, which used to be the natural disturbance program, and water. Then we have some communications and knowledge sharing programs listed here. 
and we have three associations. The associations are not actually part of FRI research, but they are aligned and attached to FRI research. And what they are is groups of like-minded organizations, typically uh, consisting of our partners otherwise, who want to take research and apply it. And so they take the knowledge generated by FRI research and they actually try to get things done. So for example, the Foothills Landscape Management Forum is a, a group of partners, uh, primarily from the forest and energy sectors, but also Aboriginal, that is engaged in integrated landscape management and trying to do things in the area of integrated landscape management, such as coordinated access plans. FRI research wouldn't actually do an access plan, but would provide information that would be useful to help prepare one. We have several support programs. GIS, Accounting, Human Resources Safety, and the General Manager. I should mention that our structure is quite unique, so as part, our part of uh, our structure, we have partners that contribute uh, or, uh, administration and people to keep costs down. And so our General Manager, Ryan Tu, who's sitting just over here, is actually a Government of Alberta employee who's seconded full-time to FRI Research to uh, fulfill the function of General Manager. A couple of our research program leaders, Axel Anderson and Gord Stenhouse, are also Government of Alberta employees. There was copies of the most recent annual report out there uh, at the registration booth. If you didn't pick one up and you're interested in finding a little bit more about FRI research, I urge you to do so. They're also all online at this website, so you can find out more information there. So a little bit about the value. Um, it's kind of a unique organization because it's not curiosity or research interest driven and it's not just a, a company or an organization going out and hiring a consultant and learning about what they need to know. It's a connection between the practitioners and the researchers. So it's very tight linkage and it's been very successful model uh, because uh, as I like to say, it's been successful for 25 years because the partners that provide the funding keep opening their wallets and giving us more and asking more questions. So I think in terms of a research organization, that's the definition of success, at least as far as I'm concerned. Um, we also very uh, diligently guard uh, our non-advocacy position. So we uh, uh, exhort our researchers to get the information and provide it to the practitioners, but try and stay away from saying you should do this and let the practitioners make that decision based on the knowledge that's provided to them. So it's a fine line to tread and uh, I'm constantly um, trying to guard that and uh, uh, all of the uh, um, partners are also trying to stay within that line. And it's because of the credibility issue. If we uh, step over the line and start advoca uh, advocating for something, then we um, start to fall into the fold of other organizations or think tanks that uh, very definitely have a, an advocacy position. So we try to provide the knowledge and the science to our partners and let the partners go forward with advocacy if they choose or not. And we might actually go so far as to do something like a policy analysis and uh, analyze the pros and cons of two or three policies, but we wouldn't go forward and then say this is the one you should pick. We would let the policy uh, askers make that decision. So that helps us to re re remain relevant, uh, ensure we have sound science, uh, publish that science, get it out there in the, um, uh, the domain, and then we try and help our partners through demonstration and evaluation of implementation, take it to the next step. If they choose to implement something new based on FRI research science, then we'll try and help them with that and evaluate that and continue the relationship. I already mentioned the leverage funding, um, but it's worth mentioning again. So a small contribution from a partner can often be multiplied uh, many times through other partners uh, within FRI funding uh, accounts, but also through additional funding uh, sources outside. And I'll just mention the NSERC uh, uh, CRD program is, is the, probably the main area where we get outside funding. We take uh, contributions from industry in particular Government contributions don't count for insert matching, but uh, industry contributions do, and we've been very successful at leveraging industry contributions into 
in that insert CRD program and getting additional funding through that. So we're a partner-driven organization, and uh, we are governed by a five-year business strategy, which is in the process of being revised right now for the next five-year period. When we have partner interest, we consider development of new programs. And just some examples here, uh, our Caribou program, which was initiated a few years ago, was based on a workshop such as this. And we brought uh, people who were interested in Caribou in Alberta together um, and asked them what their main question was. And at the time, the main question was, when can we turn human footprint off and not call it disturbance anymore? And that was uh, sufficient interest to the partners that funding was provided. We hired uh, Dr. Laura Finnegan uh, to start uh, in investigating that question and others. And it's off to a great start. And uh, we're getting progress towards answering that question. Similarly, we had uh, interest in uh, cold water fish, uh, especially ones that might be at risk, bull trout, Athabasca rainbow trout, Arctic grayling. We held a workshop on that. That has not so far led to a program or a project, but uh, there's still interest there. The number one question that came up out of that one was related to water temperature, as you might uh, have guessed because it, it was titled cold water fish. And is water temperature gonna be a problem for conservation for some of these species? And then that leads us to this uh, workshop today on birds. Uh, a couple of our partners, Wendy Crosina from Warehouser, where'd Wendy go? Oh, well, uh, you were over there. Sorry, I should stay in one place. I apologize. <laughs> she had to give me a switch out. Um, uh, incidental take for migratory birds became uh, an issue for some of our partners, so that's one area of investigation. And then uh, species at risk, avian species at risk. There are becoming more and more avian species at risk that are overlap uh, significantly with uh, industrial practitioners. And that's a, a question for some of the industry partners. How do we deal with that? What should we do? And then uh, there'll be some other questions that get generated today, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I got ahead of myself. I actually had a slide on that. Oh, well. One other thing that came out from province of Alberta was the effect of herbicides on uh, birds. And there'll be other questions. And you know, I had a slide last night, and I must have saved the wrong version, but um, back there in the listing of shareholders and partners, I had inserted a slide acknowledging the major funder for this workshop, which is Repsol Canada. Uh, they provided the money that uh, we were able to use to fund the organization of the workshop and keep the registration costs low. So if you see somebody here from Repsol, thank them for that. And then the remaining funding was provided by the partnership. So the format of the workshop, um, first we get people in here that are going to talk about uh, government uh, initiatives and activities and interests, and then we get researchers in that say this is what we're doing currently, and then we get practitioners in and say this is what we're doing and what we're interested in. We do all that in the morning and in the early afternoon, and then we get everybody together and say okay, based on what you heard and what your own interests are, we put them together in a knowledge cafe and we generate lists of questions and try and get some priority ranking on them. And then out of that, we come up with hopefully a list of priorities and questions, and we then will attempt to engage partners that have said this is really important to me and say, well, how important is it to you? Are you willing to open your wallets and fund either some ongoing activities uh, or interrelationships with others or something independent and new that should get started that we can help to uh, forward the cause of more knowledge related to bird conservation.